Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm your host, Shana James, and I'm so happy to be here today. And I'm happy to talk about a topic that really goes deep, right, on the surface. It's something pleasurable and exciting, but it has deep roots in our, and especially for men, I think, sovereignty and belief in oneself and feeling power. And so we're going to talk about desire. And we're going to talk about the anatomy of desire. We're going to talk about desire as a doorway to life force energy and how to use desire in a way to, I think you said when we talked before, power a freight train and not burn a house down. (laughs) As a, as a metaphor. So yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So Cosmo means is here today. Thank you so much for being with us. And you're the creator of the Apollo project and you work a lot with, you know, people of all genders, but in this case, to helping men come back to their bodies and know their bodies and know their desires. And I think it's a, a really exciting and powerful thing that you do. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Yeah. So um desire is is such a juicy topic like you said i mean there's this feeling that um that coming into contact like truly into contact with your desire generates like you referenced the freight train like sometimes it can feel overwhelming yeah and so yeah i'm a co-creator co-founder of the apollo project which is an immersion retreat for men Mm -hmm. and um you know, part of our mission at the Apollo Project is helping, um, you know, men come into contact with the desire, feel it, hone it, and claim it as their own and really learn how to live it mm. through different embodiment practices. And, um, you know, like you reference not burning your house down or causing harm or um, yes. being feared or uh, being... Um, turned away or shut out because you're too much, your energy is too much, your desire is too much. So basically, Mm -hmm. you know, not naming desire as something that's wrong that we should push away, but that we should learn to allow ourselves to feel. I love that. Create a space to feel without actually needing to actualize all of those desires all the time. It reminds me of when I work with men and I say to them, like, I never want you to shut down the feeling of turn on and aliveness and your life force energy. And because a lot of men I've worked with identify as nice guys and they, you know, kind of shut it down to try to make someone else feel better. And I'm like, Mm. oh, no, 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 no. Like (laughs) you get to feel all of it. It's then I think what you're helping men do, too, is, okay, how do you live it? How do you bring it to the world in a way that's not just a fire hose or you know, yeah. people are getting doused by it or burning shit down. Yeah. Titration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the piece, like when you talk about, you know, the, the nice guy, like really toning down desire, toning that down, yeah. um, you know, it's great learning how to hold yourself, learning how to, um, 
titrate your expression of desire without completely like I look at it as like a little fire in my chest actually mm. is the way that I kind of feel it yeah and and I feed that little flame with my breath with my awareness that it exists yeah and with allowing desire to flow through me okay and if I don't do that that little flame kind of burns out and it becomes like a little cold a little empty and a little lackluster in my expression especially yeah. sexually and okay so tell um, us what you see like in you and in other men when that happens, how does it manifest in the world? Like what, what is actually happening for them? When it gets burned out. Yeah. How would yeah. they know? So when it gets burned out, um, it might be like uh, low interest in, in sex, low interest and motivation in just life in general. Like mm -hmm. just kind of this, like this really like dampened. you're almost just like going through yeah you're dampened and you're going through the motions of yeah. life you're fulfilling mm -hmm. the tasks you're in service and the way that it shows up in men often is feeling really used they're being mm -hmm. used for their energy used for their resources used for um what they can do for you yeah yep but you don't feel them yeah you don't feel their like charge, their desire, their energy, their, I mean, in some cases when you really get uh, into a sweet space, you don't feel their beast energy, which again can be something that is very scary for men to express or very scary for other people to experience if they don't know how to hold it. Yes. Okay. This is good. Um, can you describe, I mean, some people call it primal, some people call it beast energy, but even even before that, when I hear you say that men feel used and drained and just kind of flat and like life is life is dull, life is almost you could go to meaningless, I would imagine. I would imagine there's, you know, there's a there's a deep slide there, right, that can go into very dark places. But for some men, I think it shows up as kind of like a numbness or a low grade depression or is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it shows up in all of the things you just mentioned. And I don't know that I would, I would say meaningless, because there's still like, you know, I think men derive a lot of meaning from service to their community and their yes. family and, and to others, yeah. to their partners. And it's this, this feeling of where are you? But mm -hmm. who are you in that? Yeah. Where is your drive as far as like what you actually want for yourself uh -huh. and, and being able to, you know, be of service to people is amazing. I mean, I'm extremely service oriented Love that. and I also like the people in my life to see the spark in my eye of what I want. Yeah. When it's my time. Yeah. I know how to take it. You know how to receive. And that took a lot. I know how to receive, but I also know how to take what I want. Okay. Say when more given about that. the opportunity, when it's when it's appropriate, when I have carved out the space of really uh, naming, when I say like, you know, we ask the question like, who is this for? Who is your life for? Uh -huh. Right. And so, when the opportunity is given, when something is for me, yeah, to actually take that experience in, to really like savor it, to like oh, this is what I want exactly like this to go after that thing. And that really kind of, you know, in this, the, the six part process that I've designed around this is like, I, lo I look at it as like a chisel, like we're yeah. like a piece of stone and it's like our desires actually chisel who we are to the world. And if, yeah. if we're not expressing them, if we're not sharing who we are, uh, we become just sort of like a flat piece of stone, very effective in its weight and heaviness and strength. Yeah. But there's no definition. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going back to the word take, and I can just imagine that word can be really triggering for people in the, you know, me too era, right? Like when yeah. you said it, it was like, oh, what is that? Right. What it, What is that? When you take something, is it, you know, does that involve consent and that's the foundation or you're not even talking about necessarily sexually but there is like right a sexual taking and there are times where that yeah. can go really well and there are times where that doesn't and you know what the yeah. difference so is so let's yeah let's like let's let's talk about it sexually so let's just okay. say taking sexually so of course i mean absolutely the 
this is within a framework of consent, which the yeah. anatomy of desire is, it's basically a consent model. Great. Okay. And, and it's finding out when it is safe to take, right? I love that. So there's the shadow side of taking, which is all the things that you mentioned um, that cause harm, yeah. right? The shadow side of taking is, is all the things that we know that can cause harm when we take without asking. That's why the second step, right, after feeling your desire is making the ask okay, and then being in the negotiation. So there's this like process that I won't say that I created. I would say more like I wrote it down in a way yeah. that made really logical sense so that yeah. you can deconstruct it and see where the holes are, yeah. see where the parts that you need to work on are. Mm -hmm. Because very often people are skipping from desire to the moment and they're, they're missing asking, negotiating, Negotiation. and finding the way. Yes. Right. Okay. Great. And so those are those are what, three of the steps in there. Yeah. And so those are the pieces that like are really critical to be able to feel safe. Activating this taking energy yes. is with oh. a consensual container where, I mean, I work with a lot of women as well, and and the most common like request from women is, uh, I want to feel this taking energy. Mm -hmm. But I want to do it by choice. Mm -hmm. I want to choose to have that when and yeah. if I want to feel that yeah. rather than, you know, taking without asking, which is clearly just inappropriate and harmful. Right. And, and not connected and right. And, and not know. connected and not attuned and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all of those other things. So it's, it's learning how to uh, maybe take ferociously, sexually, erotically, like really like savoring, um, and doing it in a way where you've put in the work to make sure that it feels good for everybody involved. And so that's what this, I think this, this is this so process powerful. is about. Yeah. For, I mean, I think almost probably every, almost every man I've talked to, many men I've talked to, right. To, to have a sense of what makes it safe to take, whether it's sexually or in the world, that's a yeah. game changer. Oh my God. It's so good too. Like, yeah. Tell me, a, tell me, tell me what's good. Well, it's just, I mean, it's just, it is a game changer. It's completely changed my life because there's this, the space of, I don't know how to get to that point, but I feel the drive and the desire to take. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And without a framework to help actually have a skill mm -hmm. that can be developed, practiced mm -hmm. and matured. Yeah. Um, then basically our taking energy gets pushed into the shadow and, and often will run our life anyways, yeah. but from a shadowy unconscious um, yeah. twisted and, 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 and very often harmful kind of twisted way where it comes out. Um, me it's messy. Yeah. Whereas um, when we learn to practice it and hone it and really like save it for those ripe moments when it's really, really our time, Yes, that it's for us to take. Um, it's just like, if you can allow yourself, and that's like the step is the moment, if you can really allow yourself to experience the moment of what you've put time into crafting for yourself, mm -hmm. um, then it, it's just the most delicious. It's the most delicious experience to, to take mm -hmm. uh, consensually um, and allow your beast to really like feast on life, feast on what you want, feast on. Um, feast of the beast. Can yeah, you tell, I mean, I think I think the beast analogy is probably self-explanatory, but can you yeah. describe that a little bit, how you think of it? Yeah, so the beast is like it's a it's a very animal energy. It's very mm -hmm. powerful. It's very hungry. Mm -hmm. It wants to like devour. Mm -hmm. It wants to take in. Mm -hmm. uh, it wants to, um, you know, often adore, often penetrate energetically and physically speaking. It's like a, mm. um, it's like consuming too. Like it's like, it's this really like animalistic sort of ferocious, delicious energy. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a great enough. description. Yeah. And I love the, yeah. I don't know, I'm curious because you added the word adore. And so then I started putting adore with consume and adore. Like that, it's a really interesting because then it's, there is this kind of loving consuming. There's right? adoration and, and loving. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not like it needs to be harmful. It, it is full of adoration. It's like kind of almost obsessive, mm. like, 
like I adore you obsessively and I want to like take you in and consume you and have you become part of my cells and part of who I am and part of my life experience, you know? Yeah. That's powerful. <laughs> I'm like hot. Yeah. Um, just I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So maybe tell us a little bit more about the anatomy of desire <clears throat> and your, your six part yeah. process. I mean, we've gone through pieces of it, but anything you want to say either as a whole or pieces that are standing out for you through what we've talked about? Yeah, great. So I'll just sort of walk you through the six parts real quick. And it's, it, it's, this is something that can be really long in its description, but it's also very simple and it makes sense. Okay. So step one is just allowing oneself to feel desire as Pamela Madsen, who I work with at Back to the oh, Body says, yeah. um, to feel desire as a meal in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So without having to ask anyone for anything, without having to get permission for anything, is just let yourself feel your desires. Write them okay. down. Note them. Let them exist in your body as life force energy. And yeah. learn how to hold them. Yeah. Okay, so that's step one. It's just learning how to permission yourself Have them to permission. feel. Just yeah. to be. And I often find one of the things that was helpful for me was noticing that if desire is arising with deflation or a feeling of like ugh, hopelessness, then oh, to notice I shouldn't that, have that I can't right, have that. but that those two are actually separate. Right. And to feel the energy, the innate energy of desire itself, as opposed to when it gets yeah. connected to some story or history, you know, to yeah. let ourselves actually feel the desire itself is delightful and full of life and energy. Yeah. I mean, I consider desire to be the compulsion to even exist. Wow. Yeah. Right. Like that yeah. to me, it, it sort of, I won't get too far into it, but it is truly a spiritual practice that is like, I exist because desire exists. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If, if desire didn't exist, I would not exist. Yeah. And so it's like allowing that creation energy to live in your body without yeah. needing to take it from ether yet. Okay. Yeah. And I would imagine too, one more thing is just that I imagine part of the work you do with men is recovering from, you know, when big T, little T trauma, whatever happens in their lives yeah, that yeah. then shut down the capacity to know what they want and feel what they want and allow yeah. it to happen in their bodies. Exactly. And that's yeah. a big part of the work we do at the Apollo Project is yes. reconnecting men to that yeah. just basic understanding and feeling of what they want. And so we talked about the desire in the ether, and then we decide, okay, at what point do we want to take desire from ether and bring it into matter? Mm. And that's when the chiseling process starts to happen of like that desire being important enough to be a part of your life that you want to share with people, ask for it and have their perception of you change. And so the, the, the big important piece around making the ask is what I call it. So the desire is the first part and the ask is the second part. Mm -hmm. Once you take something from ether to matter and put it out in the world, it's a very vulnerable thing to do. And it takes yes. a lot of bravery, a lot of courage. And so what I encourage people to do is to just congratulate themselves by making the ask. Yeah, It doesn't. And so basically what we call it is it. I call it a shift in the directionality of care. Mm. So the first, the directionality of care starts with I'm important enough for my desire that keeps churning around that wants to be part of my life to be spoken. Wow. Okay, yeah. And there's all this power that comes through the throat, right? The I like that you brought it back to I'm important enough, right? I... I'm important enough. So the directionality of care is on yourself. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's spoken. Yeah. I encourage people to just congratulate themselves. Okay, you spoke it. You were very brave. You brought it into the world. Yeah. Now shift that directionality of care onto the person that you've mm. just shared this with. Beautiful. And really care about the impact that it has on them rather than the agenda to get what you want. Yeah. And that is the hugest difference where people get caught up is it's like, just give it a beat. Yeah. Just let it land let for it, someone. Let it, let, sit, it, let it land. You know, let it sit. And, and what was the shift you said? To, Wait, that was because that was shifting huge. The, the, yeah, the directionality of care from yourself that yeah, you're important other. enough that your desires can be part of the world yep. to, hey, 
there's somebody else involved here. Yes. But then you the made world another is shift now involved. from try. It was like from getting what you want to the impact on them. Yeah. To the impact. So caring about what happening, what's happening for them when yes. they hear your desire. Great. Very likely, let's just say in this context, in a sexual container, if you're asking for something new, that's mm -hmm. edgy, that there might be an impact and they might be like, wow, oh, you want this or you want it with that person or, you know, whatever the dynamic is that you shift from being concerned about getting your agenda met. Yes. And into, into more importantly about how that person is feeling. That's and so just powerful. Sit with it. Right. And that, and that can be challenging, right? Because if you're be nervous and you're you just said something you've never said, you know, the attention can be really still self-focused, but as you turn it out and, okay, let me care about this other person and the impact. And then we're more likely to be able to co-create something versus exactly. staying in this. And that's the separate. prep work for the negotiation, right? Yeah. Is it's not just about manipulation, control, trying to get what you want, yeah. you know, being selfish about your needs. It's about, whew, this was really important for me to share. This is a yeah. part of who I am. Yep. And I care about you and how it's impacting you. And then you can move on to the next step, which is like, if this is even going to happen, because sometimes people might just want to share a desire. They might not even, they just want you to know that it exists. They might not even be trying to get it done. But mm -hmm. let's say we move to the negotiation step and it's like, if, what, and when. Yeah. Right? So you go, okay, now we're getting into this like, what um, one of my teachers uh, from the world of somatic sex education, uh, Kareen Diachuk, she says she has this thing that she developed called the spectrum of response. Mm. And so that's the big, like wide range between yeses and nos. Great. So it might be like, yeah, I'm down with this desire, but like not today. But not today. And or like, not like that. Or like, okay. I'm not like that. I'm going to need this. or So there's just like kind of negotiation of, between a full like fuck no uh i don't know if we can swear on here you but... can totally swear yes <laughs> okay and uh and a fuck yes right there's a big range of possibilities so it's yeah. again focusing the directionality of care on the relationship between yeah. the two people Great. rather than the soul desire or the soul impact beautiful and then say like okay okay we're gonna do this then we we go into what i call the way is this is like, how are we going to do this? Okay. So this is when we include other people. Maybe you're navigating a threesome or a gangbang on a bus. You need to <laughs> arrange a bus. You got to get, you know, however many people you want involved. You have to make the ask of them and negotiate with them and do this whole process again with other people. So the how is like logistics uh -huh. of your ask coming into shape. And the right. logistics don't happen until you are what? Like until kind of it happens between board. the two people. Okay. Yeah. So it's like once you make an ask and you negotiate like if and when or mm -hmm. what is going to happen, then you can go to the how, Got which it. I call the way. It's like, okay, okay we're going to need, you know, seven people. Bus, we're seven gonna people. Loop, we're <laughs> going to need a bus. Example. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, this is my wife's example. Just to, <laughs> just, to add, just, just to add a little fun to that. Um, and then, okay, so then just moving along. So it's like, okay, once you figure out how you've got all the logistics, then we move into step five, which is I call the moment. Okay. okay. And the moment is like, very often we do all this work to get a thing and we check out. Mm, interesting. And so... The moment is about presence. Yeah. It's about really like savoring this experience that you've crafted for yourself, mm. really savoring the manifestation energy, savoring the time and the, the care that went in between two people or, you know, in the bus case, maybe eight people yeah. to create this experience that you really are present with it. And you yeah. really but I can totally get, imagine that how hard it would be you know? like this thing you've wanted and it was all this fear or has it whatever came up, you know, and then, right. And then it could then blow it, you out or it could, you know, you could yeah. check out, dissociate, whatever. Cause holy shit, it's real. It's happening. It's yeah. And so the moment just encourages 
uh, kind of moment to moment, like guidance, responsiveness, presence, care, and receptivity of this experience you've created. Amazing. So that you can also assess because the next step is the check-in. So the check-in, this is my favorite line of this whole process is the check-in informs the desire of tomorrow. Mm. And if you're not present, is this a check-in after or is this a check-in during? So the check-in is after. Okay. I love this. And that's a really good piece. Yeah. Yeah. And the the check-in or the debrief is actually after the neurochemical bath of the experience is sort of dissipated. You don't do the check-in directly after you got to give it a chance to kind of come back to like not being, you know, intoxicated with all the neurochemicals of a neurotic experience or, or any type of adrenaline rush experience. Great. And so the check-in informs the desire of tomorrow. So If you're not totally present in the moment, Mm -hmm. it's very difficult to assess whether you actually want that thing again. Right. So if you really feel it, you might be like, you don't know how many people that I've talked to that have this like burning desire to have a threesome. And then once they had a threesome, they're like, wow, threesomes are really awkward. And like, who do you (laughs) focus on? Like, I don't know that I even like that. I really like just one-on-one kind of connection mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe it's like, oh, the the gangbang on the bus was a fun idea, but it's just it's just too much. So complicated. Yeah, so many. You know, it's, just too much. <laughs> it's just too much for me, you know? Yeah. So basically what the check-in does is it offers you an opportunity to mature, refine, and uh, inform the desires of tomorrow. Right. So this is a cycle. Right. Yeah. The, it, the check in leads to the new feeling of, oh, what do I next? You know, what are my next desires? And then yes. what are my next asks? And that. it becomes a fearless process to actualize desire. Choose when you hold mm. things just for yourself to feel that you would never say out loud to anyone. And you don't need to that you mm. just let yourself feel. And then there are things that you choose to bring to the world and help craft who you are. Yeah. Right. And especially I think what I love about the check-in or the debrief is um, I I was writing in honest sex in my book. I was like, you know, m- many people hope and pray, right, that sex will get better. And I think that's used oftentimes for like hope and pray you won't get pregnant. But it's like, you know, we hope and pray sex is going to keep getting better. But a lot of people don't talk about it. And a lot of people mm-hmm. don't go back to that moment and reflect and say, oh, this is what I could use to have, you know, if like this would have helped me to be more present or this would have helped me to, um, you know, be able to have more attention on the flow of three different people instead of two people or Uh whatever it Uh may be. And without that, I think it's really hard for those experiences to continue to deepen and, and be more exciting over time. Yeah. Exactly. Like, for example, the threesome, right? So you might say, oh, I don't like threesomes. But if you really took it back to the negotiation phase, you might be like, well, I actually need threesomes to be focused. So Uh what I've noticed is that I want one person to be the receiver of the threesome. Mm -hmm. Like one person to be the focus that other two people kind of care for and service them and then rotate. Uh And so you might be like, oh, I really like being the the caretaker or the service person in a threesome. But yeah. when it's focused on me, it makes me really uncomfortable. Like too or much, right? Too I much really, energy. Right? Or, or yeah. whatever the, the 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 version of that is. Um, and that may change over time. And so then the check-in it too, it's change. like, oh, we get to keep discovering and realize we're not the same person we were a year ago or yesterday. Exactly. Now that I've had this experience, there's some new realization or new desire that gets to show up. Yeah. And you get yeah. to, you, you get to evolve. Yeah. And you get to actually like practice or play with what it would be like to not be afraid of yourself, to uh, not be afraid of your desires. And to know that that's oh, bam, another I mic could, drop, right? Like what would yeah, it be like, like I to could, not be afraid of your desires? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. This is amazing. Thank you. And thank <laughs> you for yeah. doing this work with men and others. Is there anything else you want to cover before we end for today that feels important? I mean, that was just really juicy. Yeah. Thanks, Shanna. I mean, I, I, I have plugs for my project, yeah. the different projects I'm working on. If you want, I could yeah, do tell, that. Us, tell people where they can find you. Yeah. So 
Um, we'll probably post it somewhere too, but it's the dash Apollo dash project.com. We do about uh, two to three immersion retreats a year of about nine men. Uh, you work one-on-one -on -one with a female bodied practitioner and do group work with the men uh, around topics like this, where you get to practice real skills you can take home and learn how to cultivate a feeling of, um, groundedness in who you are not being afraid of yourself afraid of your desires afraid of how to ask for what you want and so that's the apollo project that's for generally heterosexual or bisexual men okay um and i also work with uh pamela madsen as i mentioned um on the she was on the operations. podcast oh or i interviewed her maybe like i don't know five seven ten years somewhere somewhere a long time oh, wow. ago. I love great her. cool yeah yeah. Yeah. So Pamela and I are teaching partners. We work very closely. Oh, very uh, I'm cool. a practitioner. I work with the company. I do about eight retreats a year with back to the body and that's awesome. back to the body.org. And that's for, for that's women. for women again. Yeah. Generally speaking, um, you know, hetero or bi leaning women. Okay. Beautiful. And just to note if there's, um, you know, gay men out there looking, there's also my colleague court box, um, runs retreats like this for gay men as well so awesome um, there's That's a little something awesome. for everyone around immersion retreats in our pod our collective of our team beautiful and um, they're really great experiences doing immersion awesome all right thank you so much and let's just end with maybe one what's one tip that you have for someone a man who is you know feeling that not quite connected to his desire, that spark, right? You said something about the spark in your eye. You like when people can see the spark in your eye. If someone's not connected mm. to the spark in his eye, what's what's the first step? What do you recommend? Or words of I, you know encouragement? Yeah. Yeah. The encouragement is um is taking small bites. It's finding something small to start with first to practice this process. So allowing yourself to just you know ground in take some breaths, notice what excites you and start with something small. Just share it with one person that's important mm -hmm. to you. A desire? Just, just, just share a desire. Yeah. yeah. Just something just to get the loop Wheels going. Like turning again. Yeah. Just get it. Get. You don't want to go with the biggest thing and be like, you know, I want to have a threesome with your best friend. That's too big. Yeah. Right. Um, just, just something. I would like you to touch my cock like this. Yeah. I would like to have 10 minutes of just focus time on me. On me. Mm -hmm. Something like that. You know, just something that's like awesome. manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. And I love that we covered, you know, the range of desire and how deep it goes and taking that was a really powerful piece and you know what it would be like mm -hmm. for men to not have to be afraid of their desires and to actually have that energy to use for themselves and the world yeah and a process to mature them right because that's a part yeah. of it it's 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 you can't just let this wild energy go out untamed yeah you have to have a, a real process to like nurture and hone your relationship to desire in order to feel safe and people around you to feel safe with it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.